Hi, my name is John Storms, and today i uh, doing a video on transitioning a bunch of my snowflakes over to pixels. So here I got a picture of my house from the, the visualizer, and I have all these single channel snowflakes, right? So last year I converted a couple of them over, but this year I want to convert the rest of them over, or most of them. The thing is, is that they are all represented by single channel. So what I mean is, if I come over here, and I just scroll down a little bit, see so here's all my snowflakes. So each of those snowflakes is currently on a Lightarama controller off of one of the plugs, and each snowflake is one channel. Well, <coughs> with uh, the pixel snowflakes, each snowflake is going to be like 48 pixels. So there'll be a string of 50, I'll use 48 of the pixels. But what I want to do is I want to make it so that I'm going to put the snowflakes in the same place and I want to make sure that I have the same show. I want to be able to have the, you know, leave off this year where I, you know, I want to start this year where I left off last year. <clears throat> so I want to, I don't want to have to start over. So what I want to do is I want to take this information and move it to the pixels. Now I could copy and paste it, but that would take a really, really long time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, come into here and I'm going to load up my new channel configuration. This is, uh, I recently made this and it contains uh, all the channels for <coughs> the new pixel snowflakes. So I'm going to leave the old channels where they're at, but I have these new, all these new channels and before where I had one channel, now I need to move that information over to like 150 channels. <coughs> So you can copy and paste, and there's a couple ways you can do it, um, but so, to say the least, it's tedious, <clears throat> especially when you start dealing with, you know, like 70 sequences, it's going to take a long time. So here I have all the new um, pixels, pixel channels, and there, there are tons of them. And so what I want to do is I want to move these guys down. <clears throat> so now if I, <clears throat> excuse me, a little congested, so if, come over here and just to show that you know what we're trying to make it look like come over here and I play the sequence this is the let it go sequence and this is the visualization of my house for, for 2015 with um, with DMX channels but this process works whether it's DMX or if it's uh, regular Lightarama channels come on here it comes I'm waiting for the snowflakes here See, there they are. So what I wanted to do is I want to do that exact same thing, but with pixels instead of the single channel Lightarama stuff. So what I did is I wrote myself a little program. It's a Perl script, um, which means you need Perl in order to run it. That's not Perl. So if you want to get a good version of Perl for Windows, you go to do a Google search on Active State Perl, right? <clears throat> and uh, you go here, you can download it. It's perfectly free and it works uh, amazingly well. Uh, Perl is something is a scripting language that's been used for years and years, uh, and it's really handy and it's not terribly hard to learn. So in order to run it, I need a command window. So I get a command prompt up. And I'm going to switch to my Lightarama directory. So it's on my C drive, and instead of putting it under Lightarama, I put it under LORAW, and then I go CD to Sequences. Okay, and here I have a program, a Perl script called inherit2016.pl. Okay, so what this does is it takes three files. It takes an in file, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as. I'm going to save it as test LMS. Okay. Yep, want to replace it. So it's saving. And so I'm going to say inherit. And because I, I call it inherit because it's inheriting its data from uh, an entire universe can inherit its data from one channel. But uh, I'm going to specify a range of pixels and I'll show you that in here in just a second. So the in file is going to be test.lms. Then I specify what the out file is going to be and I call it out.lms. It's best not to overwrite your original file just in case you make a mistake or there's a problem in the script. You don't want uh, to have uh, problems. You want to be able to go back. So the third thing it takes is it takes a, uh, 
a table. Okay, so I, I went into Excel and I created this. And the way this works is this first column is just a, a name. So this is just to help me recognize that this is snowflake number six and it's at the top of the left side of my house. Currently it's on unit ID 15, which for me it's a, it's a DMX universe, but it could be a Lightorama um, unit ID. And then this is the channel. Okay, so this is where the single channel of data lives. And I'm telling you, I want you to take what's on unit 15, channel 17, or DMX universe and channel 17. I want you to take what's on 15, 17, and I want you to move it to universe 19. Now here in this column, I could say, put a star there, and it would just apply it to everything in universe 19. But I want it on pixels one through pixel 48. You could also do channels, where you would take this and multiply the 48 by 3 if you wanted to do the same thing, but I'm going to do pixels. And then this auto, this actually is uh, color. So what happens is if I put B here, it would only uh, uh, fill in the blue channels for my RGB. So for where I have these, you know, 48 pixels, it would only populate a third of the channels, just the blue channels. It would leave the red and the green alone. If I were to do RGB, then I would get white. Okay. Now, when I say auto, what it's going to do is when it's reading in this file, and it look and it looks at this snowflake, snowflake 22, it's going to see that here I had it as the color blue, and it's going to do its best to retain that color blue when it moves it into my new sequence when it applies it to pixels. Okay. So it's a little bit smart that way. Okay. So what I do for this is I save this as, I save it in the sequences, and I save it as a comma delimited file. That means, hey, I'll show you what it means. I'll hit save. Yes. Let me go back to my command window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say type to, to show the contents of the file. And this is 2016B. And it's that same table from Excel. It just shows that there's a column separator using a comma. Okay. So I want to say, and these are the rules. So this is telling the script what to do. It's saying, you know, take whatever's in three, you know, uh, unit ID three or universe three, channel 17, and move that to, uh, to universe 70, right? I'm sorry, not three. It's universe 17, channel seven, move that to universe 60 pixels 1 through 48. Okay, so let's run it and test.lms is our in file, out.lms is the output file, and then the 2016.csv uh, file is the rules file. So I hit enter and what it does is it goes through and it reads in all of those uh, channels that it's going to use as its source and it copies those into memory and then it goes through it again and it finds all the channels that it's supposed to be writing to and it writes that sequencing information into those. Okay, so it went through and it did its thing. So now, come into the sequence editor and I open the new out.lms and while that's loading, I'm going to go to my visualizer because I need the new version of my visualizer where I put all the pixels in. See, now all these snowflakes are represented by pixels. Okay, so I did that the other day. Let me put that in the simulation mode. And what I'm hoping for is that I get the same show as I had before. I mean, that gives me a good starting point for, uh, for next year. So I hit play. thinks about it. See that? There they go. Just like before. Except now instead of doing, the, you know, sending that data through a single channel, it's sending it through multiple channels. You know, I still have the original data. It's still there. But if I scroll down, you can see that here in the snowflakes I've created, it has copied that information down into here. Now it's the same across the entire snowflake, but that's how the single channel would look. 
see that. And in cases where the snowflakes were blue, like they here, it's just copied over the blue color. In cases where it was white, it brought over the white. Now from here, I can do whatever I want, but this is a very quick way for me to get, uh, you know, all across all 70 sequences to uh, retain what I had and then go from there. So I don't have to start over from scratch. Okay, and that's pretty much all there is to it. And like I said, you know, that took a couple seconds to run versus if I had to do that by hand, that would have taken me, you know, anywhere from, you know, 10 minutes to half an hour to an hour, to, and it's tedious, so it's easy to make a mistake. Okay, so that's how it works. Now, if you're interested in how the script works, let me open that part up here. So let me just say this, you know, so I wrote the script, but I don't really support it. You can use it. If it doesn't work for you, that's that's unfortunate, but that's life. Um, also, uh, this is a Perl script. This is written by a hobbyist, so, you know, mileage may vary. So I recommend you make backups of your files because you never know when a script's going to go crazy and uh, destroy something. And, uh, you know, in these cases, if something goes wrong, typically the file won't load up in the Lightarama anymore. And given they're so big, they're really hard to troubleshoot. Now, uh, anything that this uh, file changes, it does comment out in the original, but the next time you load it up and save it in Lightarama, those, that commented out information is then gone. Um, so I put this little verbiage in here just so people understand I'm not to be held liable for any uh, damage or harm that this script may cause and that you need to, uh, you need to do, do, uh, to do backups. <coughs> So, uh, basically the way it works is, you know, you have an in file, which is your source that you're reading from, you have the out file that you're writing to, and then you have the rule file, which is a comma separated file, and the format for that rule file is, go, is detailed here. Okay, um, if in the rule file you have something started with a little hashtag or a pound sign, uh, it will just ignore that, so you can put comments in there for yourself. Um, when we're talking about the destination channels, I had them set up with pixels, from this pixel to that pixel. You can also say from this channel to that channel. So if you're talking DMX, you could say, you know, channels 1 through 512. If you do star or null, it will copy, it will just apply it to all the channels in the network. Okay, so it works as a filter. Another filter is the next parameter where you can specify RGB in any combination, and then you can also say uh, null, which means just, you know, apply everything, um, and then auto, which is where it's actually going to look in its Lightarama file and try to determine what color it is. And so what it does, is, let me just scroll down here, in the color lookup, and I've added more colors. Um, I just uh, the copy I have here doesn't have uh, yellow and violet and some of the others. But basically, Lightarama will have these color codes that it writes into its channels, and so we look for those, and then we try to match it up the best we can. Like these are basically green. There's a couple of reds. There's a couple of yellow, yellows, and cayennes, and so on. And so we try to keep it as close as possible. For my purposes, I'm mostly using just this color, blue or white, and that works fine. But the po version I have on the, the Google Drive is a little bit more complete. So that's the only place I can think where people may actually want to add a bit. Um, I did see a bug at one point where you know a you know some channels didn't copy over right, um, but I wasn't able to reproduce it and it just magically went away. So I don't completely uh, trust that it's there. Um, if you run this and there's data that's already in the pixel channels, it will be overwritten in favor of the new data that it's copying from the from the single channel. Uh, it does not merge them together. So, uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. So again, uh, it saved me a ton of time, probably on the order of uh, hundreds of hours. So hopefully it's useful to somebody else. Bye.